Burmese pythons are causing vast negative impact. Burmese pythons in general are the species most people are referring to when they say python. Um, we do have another python species that is established in South Florida in one smaller location, which is the Northern African python. But generally, yeah, the Burmese python is the one that's being pulled the most. It's the one that's established across the landscape in South Florida. And what makes it different? Uh, well, different than our native snake species is its size alone. So even in the United States, the largest any of the native snakes in the United States get are below 10 feet. We are regularly pulling pythons out of the Everglades that are over 10 feet long. So that alone, um, it, it makes them just very different. A lot of animals may not even recognize that a snake is supposed to get that big. They've got kind of this um, more blunt faced diamond shaped looking head with almost like a diamond shape on the top of the head. That's pretty distinctive with a line going through it. Uh, they do have a blotch pattern. So there are these closed blotches. They all these all pythons. Yes, they all have different patterns, but they all have these same general characteristics at this point. They're also semi aquatic. So that's not to say other snake species and a lot of our native snake species are also considered semi aquatic species. Burmese pythons being semi-aquatic is a problem because South Florida is mostly a semi-aquatic ecosystem. So they're moving across that landscape with ease. Whereas in humans, we're terrestrial. So it makes it a lot more difficult for us to get out to these locations where a lot of these pythons are breeding, where they're moving across the landscape. And then them being snakes, snakes in general, one of their, their main defenses is to camouflage and to hide themselves and to be hard to detect. And that's another issue we have with Burmese pythons, is that they are difficult to detect and you will be standing next to what you know is a 14, 15 foot python and you can't see it. So all these things make them a bad invasive species along with them being a generalist predator. That means they're not picky, they're eating our native mammals and birds and reptiles, which are obviously causing vast negative impacts in our Everglades ecosystem. That includes, unfortunately, some of our endangered and threatened species, such as the federally threatened wood stork and the federally endangered Key Largo wood rat. We have multiple research partners who have published studies showing these significantly big declines in mammal species in the Everglades. We're continuing to learn more about what these cascading in the future effects are going to look like, but we imagine based off other systems where we've seen something similar that when you essentially hit one level of a trophic cascade that hard, such as the Burmese pythons have, especially in regards to mammals, there's likely other cascading effects happening. We have learned a lot about uh, parasites that pythons have brought um, to our native species. So the pentastome is a non-native parasite. It's a lung parasite that's been found throughout Burmese pythons. We know the path that it got here was through Burmese pythons and it has now spread to our native snake species and it's as far north at this point. Native snake species have continued to pass that along within other native snake species and the native snakes are now being found as far north as Alachua County in Florida with pentastomes in their lungs. And these pentastomes, if they build up enough, can cause mortality and that's the same problem for our native snake species. We also are seeing evidence that pentastomes can pass to other reptile species. So again, that's another effect we have to think of. What some of the, the data is showing right now from some of our research partners is that when they're young, they, they seem to have a higher mortality. Now these things are born at two feet long, which is still a pretty long animal. That, that, that's a pretty long snake to come out of the egg at two feet long. But even then, at least they're still within the size class of you know some of our native species of snakes. So it appears that there are some animals that will prey upon them when they are that young. The problem is, is once they become adults, we don't have a lot of evidence that there's something regularly preying upon an adult Hermes type, which again, isn't much of a surprise when you think about how big they are and there's, there's just nothing like that in the US. So they came in through the captive animal trade and they were introduced through the accidental and or purposeful release of these captive animals. 1979 is when we had our first actual python data point um, and in the 1990s is when we really started to see an uptick and that's when I think people started to really realize there there was a problem uh, and again some of that's because these animals are so hard to detect by the time we're detecting them there's a high likelihood that there's more than the single individual we're detecting um, so that means there's likely multiple individuals in the area at this point they are 
considered established by most experts. The northernmost part would be the southern tip of Lake Okeechobee, and then the northern part of the Keys would be the other, that southern tip edge of their range. At this point, we're removing over two to 4,000 pythons a year. There's not a lot of options on what to do when you're removing that many animals. These are wild snakes. These are not captive animals any longer. They are wild. And they behave like wild animals do. Um, when you go to capture an animal, they're going to defend themselves. So they're going to strike. They're going to try to get away from you. They can constrict. Um, they must. So at this point, that's that's where we've gotten to is removal and humane killing. So I really, really want to want to put that point. There is a legal and ethical obligation. It, it, they are protected. All live animals of Florida are protected by anti-cruelty law, including invasive and non-native species. And so that's a legal obligation to treat and to mainly kill pythons when they're captured. There's also the ethical obligation, as these are living animals um, and they are terrible for the environment. We have got to be removing them. But yes, there are there are humane ways, there are safe ways to capture them, and there are humane ways to kill them. And it, it's a very serious issue, and it's something that we, we want people taking seriously so that they understand the gravity of, you need to do this correctly, and this is why. We start with the American Veterinary Medical Association's um, guidelines. And they recommend, and this is written up by veterinarians, um, they recommend a two-step process to prevent suffering and to destroy the brain cavity for humanely killing, and that's just reptiles in general. So ours is a two-step process, and we go through different methods for step one. Your method, though, should result in the animal losing consciousness immediately. And then step two, which is, again, immediately following up with step one, is you should then destroy the animal's brain by doing something we call pithing, which prevents the animal from regaining consciousness. In particular with pythons, this is a landscape-level issue. This is not just in one land area. In South Florida, they're spread across the landscape. So we've got many different programs taking that multi-pronged approach. We've got the paid python removal contractors. We have scout snake programs. There are detector dogs. There are other new tools continuing to be developed. We have the Florida Python Control Plan written by 15 organizations that included local, state, federal, tribal, and even one NGO. Now there are 16 organizations on that work group who are actively meeting throughout the year to coordinate where we're doing control, how we're doing it, again, on that landscape level, which has been very, very essential to us moving forward with Burmese pipeline control.